Do all bacteria produce biofilm? Or do they have a nanotechnology coating? Is there any difference between acute and chronic wounds in the use of uh, anti-inflammatory therapies? Uh, biofilm, as it ages in the body, is there different um, densities to it? Lyme disease, is that a disease of biofilm or not? In 2003, uh, I became disabled uh, with lumbar pain, L5-S1. Uh, but unbeknownst to me, I kind of picked up something from the hospital that basically confounded 22 different doctors in, in different specialties. So, I mean, why should we care about this? Well, if you look at the statistics, they're quite unbelievable in terms of the burden it places in our economy, let alone the personal effects on patients. I mean. Seven out of 10 deaths in the United States relate to, uh, or I should say, cost 70% of all healthcare dollars. We have well over half a million people dying annually from chronic bacterial infections. So do the math. That's the same number of fatalities as cancer. I just wanted to give you a couple of quick snapshots into how we think nanotechnology is beginning to play a role in fighting bacteria, again, without using antibiotics. Nanotechnology really involves using small particles, small tubes, or small features on materials. You change surface energy, you can change the degree of bone growth or of, of vascular growth. In fact, we see you can enhance it. But you can also change bacteria growth. We started thinking, wouldn't it be great to use the magnetic power of these particles to basically penetrate a biofilm. There are approaches that we can explore as a community that don't involve drugs that can reduce bacteria attachment, growth, and penetrate biofilms. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about <clears throat> diagnosing biofilm infections by looking for bacterial DNA. Why do cultures fail? Well, they fail oftentimes because oftentimes by the time somebody gets to have a culture taken, they've been treated with antibiotics. And so antibiotics will do one of two things. They'll either kill the bacteria or they'll stop their growth. Most of the, the, the patients that were going in for what's called revision arthroplasty, where they're taking out one joint and artificially putting another one, the physicians thought, and this is, they, they call it sterile loosening, so that it, they thought that it had just become mechanically unstable. What we found with this study is that almost every single case, that they, even the ones that they considered sterile loosenings, actually had a bacterial infection. So we really need to change the culture of culture, if you will. And <clears throat> one of the ways to do this is for patients to request the most DNA, most advanced DNA-based diagnostics. So biofilm, it's costing us dearly. It, it costs us our health. There's a lot of suffering that comes from, from biofilm. So according to the Surgeon General, there's 80 to 85 percent of American adults have some form of periodontal disease. This is something we cannot see. Uh, if you use traditional approaches in dentistry with just measuring pocket depths and uh, just a visual exam, you're probably going to miss this more than you'll find it. Now the one in particular that I pay a whole lot of attention to is PG, it's Porphyromonas gingivalis and it's just a bad dude in my eyes. There's a study uh, that came out in 2009 that showed when it's present, you raise your risk of having a heart attack by 13 and a half times. Bacteria can, can cause the acute infections, the planktonic, but they can also cause biofilm infection, and that's the chronic infections, and that's what's been so sorely and, and just miserably uh, uh, ignored by medicine. Okay, a third of y'all have a biofilm disease and you suffer with that. And you, if, if you don't have it, a family member or friend has it, it's that ubiquitous. If you collapse the biofilm, you get a much better pop in getting wounds healed. That's the outcome studies, full closure of the wounds, and biofilm appears to be one of the big barriers. So when we treat specifically for biofilm, we get a big improvement in how wounds heal.